Our study this morning is going to be on Psalms uh, 119, verse 83, whereby we are going to learn uh, uh, about affliction of a Christian, or how, or the life of a Christian in general in this world how he behaves himself and what surrounds him, good and evil, all of them we are going to see in that one verse, uh, 119, chapter 119, verse 83, and I start from reading from verse 82. Or from Itawan, which says, My soul fainteth for thy salvation, but I hope in thy word. 82. Mine eyes faint for thy word, saying, When wilt thou, when wilt thou comfort me? 83, which we are going to be more deep about it, it say, or it says, for I am become like a bottle in the smoke, yet do I not forget thy statutes. Kiswahili? Kiswahili nasema, nafsi yangu imefifia kwa hako utamani wakofu wako, nime lingojea neno lako. Macho yangu yamefifia kwa kuitazamia ahadi yako. Nisema hapo lini utakapo nifariji. Maana nimekuwa kama kiriba katika moshi siku sisahau amri zako. If you hear from the verse the, the first verse or the first part of that verse 81 you hear that my soul fainted for thy salvation. That means a Christian always is looking forward for those promises of salvation. And he is ever hoping, or he says, but I hope in thy word. He is ever hoping in the word of salvation. So when he says, Mine eyes fail for thy word, saying, when will thou comfort me? You know, it's as if he's saying, I have been waiting for this salvation, and even my eyes fail, because I cannot see anything near about this salvation. That's why he's saying, my eyes fail for thy word, saying, when will thou comfort me? When will you, God, comfort me? and make me make what I've been waiting for all that time comfort of my soul. But when you come to Psalms, Psalms verse 83, it says, For I am become like a bottle in the smoke, yet do I not forget thy statutes. So why does he say that he has become like a bottle? You know here, we must understand why he is saying that he, is, he has become like a bottle in the smoke. You know, this bottle here, the psalmist is referring to that bottle which were used in ancient times. That bottle uh, was a skin type. They were using those bottles which were for and which were made by skins, not this one which we are using nowadays. So he has become like a bottle in the smoke. That bottle, or the bottle of a uh, of a skin, if you put it uh, near the smoke for a long time, it shrinks or it hardens. That's why. He is referring to that bottle, not this bottle that we use nowadays. So, we want to see 
why he is crying so. And yet, even after saying, for I am become like a bottle in the smoke, he yet say, yet I do not forget thy precepts. That's a Christian. Yet I do not forget <coughs> thy precept. Precept here in Indian. Kiswahili nasema namna gani? 83. Si zahau nini? Amri zako. Kwa hivyo ni kusema a true Christian no matter what he goes through he will never forget the commandment of God. That's what that psalm is, is saying. So what we are going to see here is that though our trials be never so sharp and tedious, yet this must not lessen our respect to God or his word. Hata kana kwamba shida zetu zitakuwa kali namna gani? Hata kana kwamba tutaumia namna gani? Hiyo yote haiwezi kufanya Mkristo wa kweli kukosa kushikiria neno la Mungu kulingana vile liko. We must die through in that word. So here we are going to see that God may exercise his children with the sharp and tedious afflictions. Mungu anaweza ku exercise. Mungu anaweza kutumia affliction kali sana kwa watoto wake. Ya pili tutaona that these afflictions are up to draw us into manifold sins and errors of practice. Pia tutaona his affliction tena zinaweza kufanya tukiwa wa Kristo tuna malpractice our duties. Hata tunakosa kwa sababu ya vile tume, tumeumia. We are going to see So when we say that one a bottle in the smoke is a dry and shrunk up like the psalmist here is saying we mean that this christian because remember psalmist or the book of psalms is a spirit or it talk in the spirit of a true christian it is the spirit of a true christian it is the word of god it is an inspired word of god of a, a true christian crying out and probably this this was david this was david it was david and you can remember David afterward he became the king of Israel but all this complaint is from David so he was worn out and dried up with his sorrow and long suspense of expectation you know if you have read the history of David you all know from the time that David was pointed that he is going to become the king of Israel in his her father's house he went through many problems he was hurted by Saul to be killed you all know this this history is good for you if you don't understand to go and reread it i'm not going to to repeat everything but you know that david passed a lot of problem There was a time he was in the forest fighting he could not sleep you remember even when he was looking the uh, the ship of the husband of Abigail you all remember about that story working so that he may be given food all this shows us that David went through suffering in a big way So if you read Psalms 102 verse 3 what does it say 
Psalms 102 verse 3 inasema mm-hmm. maana siku zangu zinatoweka kama moshi na mifupa yangu inateketea kama kinga that is david for my days are consumed like smoke and my bones are burnt burnt as in half you see now so that is david if you read again psalms 32 verse 4 psalms 32 verse 4 okay so in a same Verse 4. Verse 4 verse 4 inasema. Mm-hmm. Kwa maana mchana na usiku mkono wako ulinilemea. Jasho langu likakauka hata nikawa kama nchi kavu wakati wa kaskazi. Yes. That is David. That is what he was going through. After he was appointed to, that he is going to be the king of Israel, he passed a lot of problems. He went through a lot of problem. And that's why he says for for day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. So here sometimes we just see David as the king of Israel. We just see how he was a happy man being a king. But we don't remember what he went through before he became a king. A king. All these are the word of David. Who is he saying that thy hand is heavy upon me? It is God. It is God. Why does he say so? It's because he has promised that he is going to be a king of Israel, but he waited for so long to get that seat. He waited for so long. Even some time he was worried maybe God was not true. Maybe it was not me. Maybe there was something that he meant but not the way I am thinking. If we can read proverb 17:22. What does it say? Tema. Moyo ulio changamuka ni dawa nzuri bali roho iliyo bondeka huikausa mifupa. Yes. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. But a broken spirit dryeth the bones. That means when whenever we are going through afflictions uh, sometimes we are very grieved sometimes we cry sometimes we are graceless in all ways so unakuta wakati mwingine tunakuwa ni watu ambaye tunaumia ni kwa sababu ya yale tunapitia kwa sababu ni magumu sana ndani yetu they are so hard for us that it is even hard to have any joy hata ukijaribu kufurahi saa zingine kidogo lakini after some minute unakuta tena umekasirika hata hata si ukasirika unakuta tena hiyo raha inafanya nini inaisha ni kwa sababu eh, you don't you are not merry we are not yani fully merry in our heart hatuna raha ile labda watu wangetaka kuwa naye katika hii maisha ambayo tunaishi ni maisha magumu sana ni maisha ambayo tunapitia yako na mambo mengi ups and down against our expectations unataka hivi unakuta hakuna kitu hata moja unaona sometimes ina, unaenda unafika pahali unakuta there is no light in the dark yani in the darkness unaona you don't see through ukiangalia in all direction unaona giza hawoni a breakthrough of what you are going through so here david was like that manake alikuwa amesungukwa there were promises but these promises were not coming they were too long to be fulfilled 
And that's the same way we undergo as a Christian in this world. We have good promises of eternal life. But kwa sababu ya mashida ambayo tunapitia, many are disheartened in this world. Unakuta wengine ni wa Kristo, lakini saa zingine unakuta hata mtu maisha yamemsukuma mpaka hata huo Kristo anashindwa hata hizo promises anaona ikana kwamba ni za nini? Yeah? They are not there. As if they are lies. And that's why wengi many backslide. Unakuta mtu alikuwa mkristo. Lakini after some time ukimuuliza do you go even to the church? Anakuambia hata siendi. Ni kwa nini? Ah, niliona tu nikae. That person has despaired. Why? Why do I follow something that I cannot see the light? Even these promises ambayo naambiwa niko na mashida mingi sana hapa ambaye ningetaka kutatua. Sasa pale tunaambiwa mambo ya mambo itakuja. Sasa hiyo ita, ita, itafika wakati gani? All these things ndio wanga wa, wa Kristo ama watu wote wanapitia in this world. So a cheerful heart help well to recover health lost. But a sad one breeds diseases. A cheerful heart. So nikumaanisha in this world why are people sick? Kwa nini watu ni wagonjwa? Kwa nini watu wako na depression? Kwa nini watu hawa yani maisha yao kabisa eh, is full of eh, sickness in always. Tukisema sickness hapa mwagonjwa sio wale tu watu wanaenda hospitali. Mwagonjwa sickness ni za njia nyingi sana. Many people are sick because if your soul is sick if your soul is sick then no even your whole body is sick why your understanding is sick your thinking is sick that's why unakuta watu badala ya kuthink something positive that can uplift their life unakuta wengine they degrade to a point that wanarudi chini mpaka wanaanza kufanya mambo wanaanza kujiuliza why are people behaving this way like the present generation watu wanalia about this, this young generation ambayo iko saa hii tukiangalia tunaona sickness they don't behave well no respect that that means people are sick tunaona pale people are sick i would like us to read another verse in isaiah isaiah 16 inasema namna gani isaiah 16 inasema namna gani Kiswahili inasema Tangu wayo wa mguu hata kichwani hamuna uzima ndani yake bali jeraha na machupuko na vidonda vitokavyo usaha haviku havikufungwa havikuzongwa zongwa wala haviku lainishwa kwa mafuta Ya yeah. Rudia. Mm-hmm. Tangu wayo wa mi, tangu wayo wa miguu hata kichwani hamuna uzima ndani yake. Bari jeraha na machupuko na vidonda vitokavyo usaha. Havikufungwa, havikusongwa songwa wala haviku lainishwa kwa mafuta. Yes. Here in English it says from the soul of the foot from the soul of the foot even unto the head there is no soundness in it but wounds and bruises and putrefying soul they have not been closed neither bound up neither mollified with ointment nikusema huyu mtu ni mgonjwa kutoka wapi kutoka kichwa mpaka nini mpaka mguu there are wounds hapa wound sio mwili even the soul itself it is wounded and there is no ointment wakati nasema there is no ointment here ambaye inaweza kuharibu unajua when we say ointment tunasema mafuta mafuta ndio upako juu ya kinonda alafu kinonda kikiwa kimekauka kinakuwa nini mollified sasa hapa nataka kusema namna gani even the soul inakuwa namna hiyo if there is no spirit of god ambaye ina, ina jaribu ku mollify the soul unakuta that soul is sick is sick it is wounded kwa hivyo watu wasijiulize why do the yani uh, present generation watu wako na mambo ambayo hayeleweki no respect this they are sick 
They don't know what to do. Hawajui jia ni gani. So, God may so follow them with afflictions that Solo may waste their natural strength and they may have such hard and long trial as to make them go into wrinkles and what by temporal sorrow, troubles of conscience or sickness, the infirmity of age may be hastened upon them. You know, God may so follow them with affliction. Why? You know, man has never known that uh, we are fallen and we are sick. Since man fell in Adam, we became sick. God wants to save us from this sickness. God, that's why we say salvations, uh, we are being taken out of this evil world and to the, that love of God. Because the Bible says, God is like a physician. He knows, a good physician knows, Ukitaka kuponesha kinonda, lazima ufanya nini? You squeeze it. Utoe nini? Utoe baka uza. It is very painful, but that's the way to treat a wound. Mungu anajua hivyo. So many things that naturally huanga zinafanyika hapa duniani, they are spiritual. How, how is he how is God as a physician going to help our soul? That's why tunasema God may so follow them or may fall, is going to follow us with afflictions. Lazima situfuate. That sorrow may waste their natural strength. Pa kunakuta wengine kwa sababu ya kuumia through afflictions unakuta even their natural strength inakuwa wasted. And they, and they may have such a hard and long trials as to make them go into wrinkles. Baka unakuta mtu anaenda akiwa amezeeka but he has been going through trials in this world. The people have never known why. God is going to follow them with afflictions. Because Babu, he wants to help you. He knows the way you are passing. Ile jia ambayo unapita, if I want to help you, I must put you in this path. Lakini nikikuweka hiyo jia wewe unafikiria, hautafanya nini? Hautarudi kwangu. Hautakuwa mwana wangu, hautakuwa mtoto wangu. Manake utakuwa tamaa zako, sitakuwa kama za, za, za watu wengi, za watu wengine. So, that's why unasikia a summit pale trudi katika our first maybe to understand kwa nini analia. Tuanzie 81. Wa 1981 nasema kwa soma kwa Kiswahili. Inasema, mm -hmm. nafsi yangu imefifia kwa utamani wokovu wako. Nafsi yangu imefifia kwa sababu gani? Ni kwa sababu natamani wokovu wako lakini Naigojea lakini sioni. Nimeligojea <laughs> neno lako. Nimeligojea neno lako. He anagojea because we have promises. Mungu ame promise this that one day I'm going to make you my children. I'm going to help you. I've given you my son. He has died for your souls and you are going to be my children. Those are the God word. He has promised. Kwa hivyo Mkristo anagojea nini? Those what? Those word. Ehe, uh -huh. Kabla mm tuende -hmm. Turudi nyuma 42 mm -hmm. 2. Inasema? Inasema. Mm -hmm. Nafsi yangu inamuonea kiu Mungu. Mm -hmm. Mungu aliye hai. Dini nitakapokuja nionekane mbele za Mungu. Mm -hmm. Na ni dini nitakayokuja nionekane mbele za nani? Za Mungu. Kwa hivyo hiyo ndio kiu ya nani? Ya mtoto wa Mungu. Kristo. Ya Mkristo. Lakini sasa hiyo kugojea bado anaigojea lakini haifanyi nini? Haifiki. Haifiki. Eh? Ita tu. Ilikuwa 42 2. Mhm. Mm 42 2. Okay, turudi kwa ita tu. Inasema, macho yangu yamefifia kwa kwa kuitazamia ahadi yako. Macho yangu yamefifia kwa kuitazamia ahadi ya? Ahadi yako. Eh? Uh -huh. Nisemapo Lini utakapo ni fariji. Macho yangu imefifia. Ni kusema, ni kama unaangalia kitu, unakiangalia mpaka, unakuta macho yako. 
kuna kitu unatarajia uone lakini haufanyi nini una mchana siku inaisha auone ingine inakuja auone mm-hmm. sasa hiyo dukushamba mkristo anangoja ufariji wa nani wa Mungu afarijiwe na Mungu sasa 83 nasema namna gani maana nimekuwa kama kiriba katika moshi sasa hapo ndio tumesema is a bottle in the smoke in the smoke in the smoke ni kusema kiriba hapa is a bottle nimesema is a skin bottle ikiwa imehangiwa juu ya nini juu ya moto sasa hivi ndio anasema nimekuwa kama kiriba ndani ya moto so a bottle in the smoke is blood hiyo kitu ukiweka pale hebu ende kuangalia hata wale watu wameishi katika the houses ya nyazi waone kuna kitu ambaye yani uwaga ina form pale the black one anything that you hang there hata ukihang ka kitu yote pale kanakuwa nini black kanakuwa nyeusi so a bottle in the smoke is blacked and smashed whereby is meant that his beauty was wasted as well as his strength his beauty was wasted baka nini baka baka strength kwa sababu mtu anaanziwa akiwa hii dunia anaanzia akiwa nini mrembo si ni kweli lakini sasa akiwa anagojea bado unakuta hata ameshindwa kufanya nini kutembea kutembea hata ile beauty yake imefanya nini imeisha imetoweka amekuwa black amekuwa mtu ambaye kabisa hata ukimwangalia huwezi kumtamani tena lakini bado anagojea nani the pro the promises manake Mungu amefanya nini ame 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 promise amemuahidi so a christian tunaambia anapiti this a christian cry akigojea ibu soma job 30 30 yani eh, 30 30 nasema nini nasema <laughs> ngozi yangu ni nyeusi nayo yani toka na mifupa yangu imeteketea kwa hali yes my skin is black upon me and by and my bones are burnt with heat they are black my bones are being burnt with heat ukisoma lamentation 510 inasema namna gani we want to understand this point umefika eh soma ngozi yetu ni nyeusi kama tanu eh kwa sababu ya hali ya njaa itutekezayo eh Our skins was black as an orphan because of the terrible fe- famine. Kwa sababu ya nja. So tunataka tuone wakati watu wanapitia katika afflictions, wakati tunasema a bottle in the smoke is a black one, tujue hiyo ni kweli ni kwa sababu even famine, wakati watu wako na nja, hata nyuso sawa zinakuwa black. Those are afflictions. You see now, still in that a verse of lamentation you can go to lamentation 48 ambayo inasema their visage is blacker than a coal their visage is blacker than a coal kwa sababu ya yale watu wanapitia katika afflictions nasema mnani kwa kingi kwa Kiswahili nyuso nyuso zao ni nyeusi kuliko makaa hawajulikani katika njia kuu ngozi yao ya gandamana na mifupa yao imekauka imekuwa kama mti. Sijui kama unasikia pale. Mtu ana yani mtu anaisha kwa sababu ya, ya, ya kupitia mashida hapa duniani. Anakauka mpaka anakuwa kama nini? Kama mti. Ni shida. Anakauka mpaka anakuwa kama kama mti ni kwa sababu yale anapitia hapa duniani. You know what we want to see that as a Christian God knows that you can go even to that eh, extent. Na sio kumaanisha kwa sababu you go to that extent Mungu anafanya nini? Ati hayuko pamoja na nani? Na wewe. Ati amekuachilia. Anajua why you are going that way. They are not known in the streets. Their skin cleaves to their bones. It is withered. It is become like a stick. So here like a bottle in the smoke. Kwa hivyo ni kama sasa hapa anasema they are like a bottle in the smoke. Sio mambo ya kuchezea. So God's road 
God's road may leave sad marks and prints upon the body, which do not only waste our strength, but deface our beauty. It can also deface our beauty. It can also deface our beauty. That is the road of God. So, Sasawa. So, the beauty of the soul groweth fairer by afflictions. Natakapa muone the difference. Why God will allow a Christian kupitia mashida mazito sana ambaye hange fikiria. God rules make may leave sad mark upon prints upon the body which do not only waste our strength but deface our beauty in a kumaliza baka even your beauty naisha why the beauty of the soul groweth fairer by afflictions whereas that of the body is blasted kwa sababu urembo wa roho eh uanga Unaendelea, unaendelea kufanya nini? Kutengenezo. Kurembeka. Iye ije ikiharibiwa. Iye ije wakati inaharibiwa, sasa naye ya ndani inafanya nini? Unaumbika wapi? Unaumbika ndani. Sasa swali ni je, ungetaka gani? So that is now a Christian, you know, a Christian is somebody very different. Manake yeye sasa is the only true clear by ataona haya. Mtu wa mwili hawezi ona haya. Mtu wa mwili haya 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 mambo basi tunaona hawezi ona. Maana yake yeye anataka urembo wa nini? Wa nje. Anataka urembo wa nje. David was a bottle shriveled and shrunk up but not his grace. David alikuwa kabisa amepitia mashida gumu sana. But he was, but his grace bado haikufanya nini haikuku haikuguzwa that's why yeye alisemekana he was afraid of god manake yale yote alipitia aliyaona akaanza kuyaona na kuyaelewa so outward beauty is but a skin deep but turn it inside out it is but blood and rawness the outside beauty is just a skin deep haijapita hapa yani ni, ni iko juu it is something outward only hii ya mwili juu ya ngozi hakuna pali imeenda it is faded by sickness ikigonjea kimefanya nini ime fade it is faded by sickness age troubles of conscience and great and manifold afflictions ikipitia afflictions ikipata njaa hata hata ikipata ikikosa vitu ya kunaurish outward inafanya nini inaisha unakuta hakuna nini hakuna urembo tena sasawa so any great affliction soon make an impression upon the skin any great affliction ukitaka kujua mtu ni mgonjwa unaangalia uzo wake ukimwangalia tunajua nini huyu mtu ana kuna kitu inafanya nini ina musumbua hata hata mwili yake hata gozi yake anaambia inaonekana wewe kuna shida lakini wakati yako na raha kidogo unakuta mwili inafanya nini ina meta meta inje tu so this flower of beauty is soon blown off age or sickness will soon shrivel it up and make it look like a bottle in the smoke si ni kweli This flower of beauty is soon blown off. Very soon, hii urembo ambayo watu wanaona hapa duniani hata wanaringa sana labda mtu akiwa young with a lot of strength na beauty of the skin. Hii inaisha, inakuja inaisha, it is blown off. Very soon you utakuja kuuliza utakuwa unajiangalia kwa kikoo kwa kioo unasahau kama kweli ni wewe. Eh? Unaweza kusema angalieni vile nilikuwa. <laughs> Lakini imefanya nini? Imepita. Imepita. It cannot come back. Watu wanajaribu hata kuongezea mambo zingine 
Mpaka wengine wanaenda kufanya vitu naita skin surgery. Ati ndio labda wafanye nini? Warudi. Warudi kidogo. Wali 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 vas. But all what they do is just only a skin deep. Even that skin surgery wanafanya ni hapa juu tu. Lakini ndani umefanya nini? Umeisha. Ndani umeisha. So a dried bottle in the smoke is contempt and cast aside and out of no use wakati that bottle ime, ime, ime kauka na imekuwa black by smoke unakuja unasema hapana hii sasa ukifinya hivi unasikia ina, ina crack kwa hivyo nikumaanisha it can no longer hold what? water or wine kwa hivyo unafanya nini unaitupa And that's why ukisoma Matthew 9:17 nasema nini? Matthew 9:17. Hebu soma. Inasema. Wala watu hawati divai mpya katika viriba vikuku. Na kama wakitia vile viriba kupasuka, divai ikamwagika na viriba vikaharibika. Bali hutia divai mpya katika viriba vipya vikahifa dhika vyote yes men do not put new wine into old bottles lest the bottle break and the wine runneth out and perisheth so here ni kusema a smoked bottle or a bottle on the smoke wakati imekuwa kabisa blood it is good for nothing or An old dried shivered bottle is good for nothing. The force of wine will soon break and rend it. Therefore, it is cast away as a thing of no use. Why was our Lord talking about these old new new old bottles? These old bottles, it is when he came to reform the church of the Jews. He came with new doctrines that since they were old in mind and understanding they could not receive that truth that's why anawaambia old men do not put new wine into old bottles so he, is, he has a new wine but your soul is an old one hamutafanya nini hamutahifadhi hii ukweli ambaye anawapatia that's why he was speaking that verse so if you read okay Let us see what are the usual sins which are incident to such sharp and tedious afflictions. Nini wanga ama what promotes these tedious afflictions? Nikumaanisha nini wanga ina prolong Mungu kukupanish ama to prolong this affliction upon you? na kumalizi because hawezi kuwa unapitia mashida from morning to evening from January to whatever nini wanga ina promote this affliction and yet you are child of god manake mungu anasema namna gani an obedient child wanga hapigwi sana hapigwi sana si ni kweli so ni kumaanisha these afflictions There is a reason why they are prolonged. Unaona mm-hmm. mzee? There is a reason why they are prolonged. God is not a respecter of any person. Hiyo watu wajue. God is not a respecter of any person. Nobody expected hata marafiki wa Job that Job angepitia nini? Yale alipiti? Yale alipitia. Paka hata yeye mwenyewe anaweza kusema kwani yako na makosa gani? Hiyo hangi hangi ana dhambi zake. But there, there was a reason why back at him we showed him namna Mind I I was hearing about you but sasa nimefanya nini? Nimekuona. That means hata yeye alikuja akafuku kama if those afflictions one zilimpeleka a higher step ambaye kweli hakuwa naona Mungu alikuwa anamsikia. Lakini sasa akafanya nini? Akamuona. So One things and by we're going to promote these afflictions one impatience and murmuring against God impatience and murmuring against God 
When our wheels are crossed, we cannot bear it. Wakati tumeguswa kidogo, we start murmuring. Kuguswa tu kidogo. We are not patient. Hata kana kwamba tunasema wacha wacha Mungu afanye yale anataka, lakini in the heart there is something ambaye unanugunika. So, to be sick of the flat is a disease very incident to such as have not learned to deny their own wills and yet are to give up themselves to the conduct of God's presence to be sick of the friend yani kunungunika kuwa mgonjwa yani ukifanywa kitu anything that is going through you are going through in, in life wewe ukikuta watu wanaramika pahali wewe ndio hata unaonesha how kuramika vile unaumia sana vile unaumia sana ukisikia watu wakisema hii serikali na wewe unaingia pale kusema yenyewe hii serikali haitu saidi sasa wewe ndio unakuwa namba moja asifu serikali ni nani ni Mungu so wewe ukiwa Christian you have forgotten that this is just a government in this world but there is a, a, a god who is above even this government that can help you out from what you are going through so wherever unakuta wimbo wenye na imbo na unafanya nini unaimba those are the things that ambaye uanga sina prolong afflictions to a christian kama nani hebu soma genesis that one vile usikie vile ndio alisema nasema na eraeli alipoona ya kuwa hamzarii yakobo mwana Raheli alimuonea ndugu yake wivu akamwambia Yakobo nipe wana kama sivyo nitakufa mimi Sasa Rachel anaomba nani watoto Jacob Jacob Asif Asif Jacob ndio anapatia na nini Wewe nipatie watoto usiponipa watu mtoto mimi nitakufa That was how binadamu wanga anajidanganya ama anadanganya ama ana mama against not seeing god anaona binadamu wezake those are the things that by wanga sina prolong afflictions ukisoma psalms 37 1 inasema namna gani psalms 37 1 usikasirike kwa sababu ya watenda mabaya usiwahusudu wafanyayo ubatili. Mhm. Waacha tusome na na, 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 na Kiingereza tusikie. In English it is say fret not thyself because of evil doers. Don't worry. Nasikia? Fret not thyself because of evil doers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Yaani Kiswahili nasema mara nyingi hata usitamani nini Hebu soma tena Kiswahili Kiswahili nasema usikasiriki usikasirike kwa sababu ya watenda mabaya Usiwahusudu wafanyayo ubatili Eh yeah. usisikiriane na wao Usikubali wale watu wanafanya yaani ufisadi usijaribu kuwa karibu na wao ama kushikana kushikania na wao yale mabaya So here tunataka kusema nini we should not fret and fret but we are up to do so to mama and depend against god and that for small matters as who tutaona mtu kama jona ni kusema tusiwe tumnanugunika kwa mambo ambayo ni madogo sana maybe because our friend amepata shida fulani tunanugunika tuna join wao wakati wananugunika kwa sababu ya masida ambayo wanapitia na sisi tunakuwa tena we join them ama tusinugunike kwa kitu kidogo vitu ambayo hasina maana and that's why tunaambiwa a christian should not swear falsely if you if you read if you read jona 49 inasema namna gani jona 49 Soma inasema Mungu akamwambia Yona Je unatenda vema kukasirika kwa ajili ya mtango 
naye akasema ndio natenda vema kukasirika hata kufa unasikia <coughs> nini nakasiza jona pale kizo kigele nasema and god said to jona do is thou well to be angry for the good and he said i do well to be angry even unto death Jonah anakasirika kwa sababu ya ile kitu ilikuwa yani ile ile mumea ilikuwa imemea pale wakati pale alikuwa amelala ambaye ilikuwa inampatia nini kivuli sasa anakasirika sasa Mungu anamuuliza sasa ni nini hii inafanya ukasirike so those are the things ambaye we should not small matters naye Jonah anajibu namna gani anatakasirika paka nini paka afi <coughs> So a Christian should not be that way. Sio kukasirika kwa mambo madogo ambayo hayana ma, maana. We should have a broad heart. Kuona mambo madogo na tunayakemea tuna, tuna na tunawachana naye. But we should not to see watu ambao kukasirika ovyo ovyo kwa mambo ambayo hayana maana. Manake if that is going to be the case, our suffering will be great. Our affliction will prolong kama hivyo ndio our character so god puts the question to jonah why are you angry but jonah eh, discontented with god's own providence especially in small matters mungu ndio ameka hiyo goal pale na tena yeye ndiye amekubali fanya nini ikau ikauke sasa anakasirika anakasikia nani Alikuwa anakasirikia nani? Mungu. Mungu. Lakini yeye hakujua. So wakati mwingine watu wanga wanakasirika lakini hawajui eh, wanakasirikia Mungu lakini wao wakifikiria tu wanakasirika kwa sababu ati kwa sababu wamekosoa na mtu fulani. That kuna kajambo kanaweza fanyika. Mm-hmm. Wewe uone kwa nini huyu amenifanyia hivi? Mm-hmm ufikiria unakasirikia yeye lakini sio huyo unakasirikia. Ehe. Kuna sababu imefanya hapo kajambo kafanya nini? Kafanyike. Kafanyike. Kwa hivyo unakasirikia mwenye amefanya hapo kajambo kafanyike. 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 That's why tunaambiwa wa Kristo lazima tuelewe hii mambo vizuri. Manake unaweza kuwa unakasirikia una, una binadamu mwezako na Mungu ndio amealao that something ifanye nini? Ifanyike. Ifanyike ndio wewe mwenyewe ufanye nini? Ujio? Ujione. Lakini badala ya kujiona unakasirikia huyo mtu. Sasa so, nikumaanisha you are against God. Mungu amealao kupitia yule binadamu akusomeshe. Akusomeshe. Lakini naye wewe badala ya kuona unakasirikia huyo jamaa. Hiyo ni makosa mingi. Ni ma, yani makosa kubwa sana kwa Mkristo. Na hiyo tunaambiwa it prolong the afflictions. Ina prolong manake Mungu alitaka kukuponya lakini ukaka ukakata so a spirit of revenge against the instrument of our trouble you see now kama vile tunasema wewe there is an instrument of trouble ambaye imeletwa kwa jia zako lakini wewe unataka ku revenge against that instrument and we are going to see When men did dare not let fly against God we vent our passion freely against men and seek their heart and laws and think we are safe Sasa wewe wakati mtu amekufanyia jambo fulani mbaya Sasa wewe unakuanga umemtega Manake alikufanyia jambo na umalizi wewe. Kwa hivyo wanga unatega yeye mpaka siku moja ukuja ufanye nini? Ulive? Revenge. Sasa hapo in spirit of revenge you are not revenging to that person. You are revenging to who? To God. God. Manaka that instrument ilikuwa imetumiwa na Mungu kuja kusaidia nani? Wewe. Lakini wewe baada ya kuona ukawa against that instrument. Sasa. Na sasa tunaambiwa eh, 
Matthew 5:44 inasema namna gani? Hebu tusome kwanza ndio tu, tuone that point vizuri. 5:44 inasema mm. Lakini mimi nawaambia wapendeni adui zenu, waombeeni wanao waudhi. Isi now some verses they are very strong but when you take them literally yani juju hautaona what our lord was teaching there love your enemies sasa mtu anashindwa how am i going to love my enemies how am i going to love my enemies bless them that curse you you bless them ni watu wangapi wanaweza ku bless ni wachache sana. Let me tell you, this is a character by a Christian tunaambiwa a Christian must walk in a knife age. Manake yale mambo watu ambaye hawezi fanya wewe mkristo unatakiwa kufanya. You love your enemy. Hapa ni kumaanisha your enemy might be an instrument sent by God for your benefit. Lakini wewe sasa hapo tunaambiwa you love him. Amekufanyia yes. Lakini badala ya kukasirika wewe you forgive him. Kwa sababu labda yale amekufanyia ame, ame hata wewe mwenyewe spiritually haufanyi nini? Hauelewi. So don't have a spirit of revenge at any one time. Hata usifikirie kufanyia mabaya. Hata mkutana na yeye salimia vizuri sana. Usimuoneshe atume kasirika. Because wewe unajua ni niapi Mungu anafanya. Ni yapi Mungu anakufanyia. So the command of love does not ex- extend only towards kindred and friends and actors, but even to our enemies. Even to, a, even to a enemy. So it is hard to bring the refugeful heart of, of a man to eat. The faults they have committed against us do not exempt us from the general law of charity, from doing good to them according to our power. If you have enough power to do that enemy good, whenever you do that as a Christian, wewe ume prolong your affliction. Mungu ameona wewe you don't have the spirit of God. Your spirit is a spirit of revenge. And the spirit of revenge is a spirit of the devil. The devil. Is a spirit of yani is a spirit of the devil. So if you read proverb Proverb 24:29 nasema nini? Proverb 24:29 Soma. Okay. 24:29 inasema <coughs> Usiseme nitamtenda kama alivyonitenda mimi nitamlipa mtu huyu sawa sawa na tendo lake. Yeah. Usiseme I'll do so to him as he has done to me. I'll render to the man according to his work. No. This is to take the work of God of God's hand to review the arrogance of Adam be as God's. Nasikia. Ukisema hivyo, what are you doing? This is to take the work the, the work out of God's heart to reveal the arrogance of Adam be as God. Manake Satan aliambia Adam awe nini? Atakuwa kama Mungu. Atakuwa kama Mungu? Kama Mungu. That means wakati una revenge. Wakati unasema nitaufanyia huyu, he has done this to me. I'm going to do this. Sasa wewe you are you are accomplishing that spirit of the devil ambaye aliambia Adam be like God God. Uwe kama Mungu. Lakini wewe unatakiwa kuachia the revenge nani? Na ndio Mungu anasema the revenge is mine. Is mine. Kwa hivyo hapo nataka yani wewe ukiwa a Christian to help you to avoid kas ama rath anakuambia the revenge is mine kwa hivyo usijari usijaribu kwa sababu wewe hata saa zingine hauelewi ni kwa nini hiyo kitu imekuja kwa hivyo don't si amekufanyia makosa usijaribu kufanya nini ku revenge the revenge is mine is mine mimi ndio najua lakini wewe ufanye nini haujui sawa sawa second samuel 169 Inasema namna gani? Soma. 
Inasema mm-hmm. ndipo Abishai mwana wa Seluya akamwambia mfalme Bona mbwa mfu huyu amlaani mfalme bwana wangu na nivike na kusii nikaondoe kichwa chake Nasikia huyu ni nani ambaye anasema hivyo huyu there was a man called Shimei Shimei alianza kutukana nani Daudi Ukisoma sababu inasema and that said Shimei when he cast come out come out thou bloody man Hivyo ndiye anaambia nani? King. Na sasa hiyo David is a king. Ika is a king. And thou man of Beria, baka anamuita wewe mtoto wa shetani. Sasa anaambia ali David hivyo as a king. Sasa Abishai was a soldier in that compound. Sasa nani anasema then said Abishai the son of Zeruya and the king, why should this dead dog curse you? Masikia anamuita nini? Mungu ambaye amefanya nini? Amekufa. Yaani why does he cast my lord the king? Let me go over. Anamwambia I pray thee wacha nimalize yeye. Wacha nipige yeye risasi. Anaweza kukutukana namna gani? Lakini David alimwambia namna gani? Wachana naye. Alimwambia wachana na? Wachana naye. Anasema I pray thee and take off his head. Ten. And the king said, What I have I have, what have I to do with you? He son of Zerua so let him curse nasikia vile alimwambia let him curse because the lord has said unto him curse david sio kama mnaelewa pale wacha afanye nini wacha anitukane vile nataka ni kwa sababu nani amemwambia nitukane ni mungu so you can imagine here nataka muone this point these are king ambaye kabisa amekalia kiti na umeona yule kijana anakuja pale kwa mlango anamtukana matusi yote mpaka anamuita wewe mtoto wa shetani. Baka askari anamwambia wacha nimalize huyu kijana. Anaweza kunitukana namna gani? Kutukana na wewe azakini namna gani? Alimwambia wachana na yeye. Nani amemtuma? Kama Mungu amemtuma. Kama Mungu amemtuma, eh? Wacha nilaani. Wacha nilaani. That is being a Christian. Because as hapo David knew that any instrument ambaye Mungu ametuma hata ikiwa hata mtu yeyote ambaye kabisa anakuja against him yeye is an instrument sent by who by god, by god. it is through god's providence na david alijua kama angefanya makosa atusi shimei hangekuwa na tusi shimei yeye alikuwa tu anaona an instrument ametumwa na mungu kwa hivyo kama angetusi yeye ama afanye makosa aambie askari uwa yeye ama piga risasi angekuwa amekosea nani amekosea Mungu sana. So that is the way tunataka tuambiwe that hii ni mambo ambayo tunatakiwa tuione vizuri ndio tuielewe ni kwa sababu tusipoiona vizuri hata sisi tunaweza kuta unatumiwa mtu alafu wewe unafanya nini? So many a man can bear afflictions but not injuries. So no man is troubled at a shower of rain. But if one cast a bucket of orobation of water upon us we shall not let it pass if it be in the power of our hands without revenge. Hivyo ni kumaanisha nini? Mtu yeyote akitoka hapa anyeshewe. Hata anyeshewe na mvua na mna gani? Yeye ako sawa. Lakini ukitupia yeye maji. <laughs> eh? Ukitupia yeye maji. Sasa that man is ready to be so furious and even to anaweza kufanyia mabaya sana unanimwagia maji si ni kweli so no man is troubled at a shower of rain hakuna mtu akona shida hata akinyeshewa nyeshewa nakuwa kwa sawa but if one cast a bucket of orobation of water upon us we shall not let it pass kama tutafa revenge itakuwa mbaya sana hivyo ndivyo yaani huwa yaani binadamu ako by nature But David was in a calmer, cooler frame and temper of spirit. No. God bid him curse. Wacha na yeye. Mungu tumefanya nini? Amekutuma akasi mimi. Kwa hivyo mimi that was humility. To deny self. Self. Hiyo ndi kukataa. Hiyo ndi unasikia kukataa self. Maana David alijua sasa hapa 
mimi labda self hii ambaye ni ya mwili ndio inatakiwa ifanye nini iishe itoke kabisa i am a king lakini tafumilia because i must be nothing before god mimi ni kufe mungu afanye nini aonekane lakini sio mimi nionekane so this is a christian ambaye eh, alifanya hivyo you see now it is better to pine away in affliction than to be free from it by sin to be as a bottle in the smoke than to forget our duty what does it say it is better to be to pine away in affliction than to be freed from it by a sin nikumaanisha it is good hivyo daud alifanya akaondokea eh affliction you see now aka ya akaondokea kuto revenge kwa sababu kama ange angekubali ku revenge yeye angetumia njia ya dhambi kufanya nini kujisaidia ama unakuta mara nyingi when we are afflicted badala ya kuona affliction to we deny ourselves uanga tunatafuta ajia ya ku escape that affliction sio kama tunaelewana a way of escaping lakini hiyo way of escaping unakuta it is sinful inakuwa it is sinful so when it is sinful sasa ni kumaanisha that affliction ambaye ilikuwa imekuja and you have chosen another way of helping or yourself which way is af- yani is sinful what do you do unajiongezea nini affliction tunaona pale yeah using indirect means to, to for our relief tunatumia indirect means for our relief badara ya kugoji, ya kuona providence ya Mungu na tuikubali tunatumia another way to relieve ourselves tujisaidie lakini ile ile jia tunajisaidia it is sinful so no trouble should drive us to sin or to use sinful means for our escape tusijaribu no trouble should drive us to sin or to use sinful means for our escape Though worn out with the expectation let our duty hold our hands from evil. Tujaribu atukusema kujisaidia kwa njia ambayo tunajua ni sinifu no matter what. And that's why your afflictions are prolonged in this world katika watoto wa Mungu. Kwa sababu wengi wakati tunaingia katika afflictions huanga tunatafuta a sinifu mean kufanya nini? Kujisaidia. Sasa mtu anafika anasema sasa hapa nisipofanya hivi. How am I going to help myself? Sijui kama tunaona pale. Unakuta umeingia in a fix, mpaka unakuta there is a sinful mean, na kwa sababu hauna option, unaona kama kana kwamba this is the only option. Na hii hapa Mungu namwambia hapa Mungu nisamehe. Because in otherwise. That's what we do. Hapa sina otherwise. Wewe hauna otherwise lakini Mungu ako na njia otherwise. Manaka yeye anasema when there is no way wakati wewe unaona mambo yako imefika mwisho hauna njia God has a thousand ways ambaye anaweza kukufungulia njia sio hiyo moja wewe ulikuwa unaona yeye yeah, akona one the over 1000 ways nikusema akona infinite way ambaye anaweza kukufungulia njia kwa hivyo nikumaanisha wewe ndio unaona hapa hakuna usaidizi sasa unafanya kwa hivyo hapo ndio tunaambiwa tusijaribu kutumia a sinful way for our escape because if we do it we add affliction sasa ya bia affliction taisha that's why the the psalmist and I'm like a smoke eh i'm like a bottle in a smoke in a smoke kwa sababu hii smoke waishi usikubali ati kuna wakati una wakati umehakisha moto kwa nyumba a bottle ikiwa pale juu ya smoke kwa nyumba kuna wakati itakosa moshi Itakosa? Haitakosa. Why? Because we are Christian, ni watoto wa Mungu tunaenda lakini yale mambo yanatuzunguka, unakuta tunajaribu hata kujisaidia mpaka tunatafuta makona ambaye ni sinifu. Sasa unakuta tena tunaongeza nini? So whatever our trouble be from the hand of God or man, 
We have no reason to go to the devil to ease us of it. Whatever our trouble be from the heart of God or men, our trouble yani kusema yale yote yani nakuja either from God ama kutokea kwa binadamu inatukuja na mabaya we have no reason to go to the devil to ease us of it because wakati unajaribu unatafuta njia ya escape ambaye is sinful umeenda kwa nani kwa shetani umeenda kwa shetani sasa wewe umetoka kwa Mungu sasa unasema hai hapa wewe shetani nifanye nini hapa ni hapa ni komboe. Hapa hata kana kwamba nimesimama na huyu Mungu, eh? Lakini hapa wewe utafanya nini? So, you know, mathematics never lie. 1 plus 1 is always 2. If you are not with God, you are with who? The devil. The devil. Kama Mungu anakuambia nimeleta affliction na wewe umetafuta njia ya escape in a sinful manner, you have gone on the side of the devil. Sasa umeenda usaidi usipata wapi? Pa, yani pale ile kama nani hebu tusome first samuel 28:7 ile nasema <laughs> ndipo sauri akawaambia watumishi wake nitafutieni mwanamke mwenye pepo wa utambuzi nipate kumwendea na kuuliza kwake watumishi wake wakamwambia tazama yuko mwanamke mwenye pepo wa utambuzi huko Endori You see now then said Saul unto his servant Seek me a woman that has a familiar spirit that I may go to her and inquire of her And his servant said to him Behold there is a woman that has a familiar spirit at Endor Who is this is the king of Israel ambaye mnajua ni Saul na watu wote walikuwa miambio mna gani? Musiende kwa miungu ya nani? Muende kutafuta njia yeyote from fam, yani ya, kuji, ya kujisaidia um, your god. Manake walikuwa wako chini ya nani? Mungu wa Israeli. Lakini unaona Saul amefika pahali jina yake ameona hapana. Lazima nitafute mtu ambaye yako na nini? Na na, na, na miungu na, na pepo. Familia spirit ambaye anaweza kumwambia ukweli. Kwa hivyo yeye amemkataa Mungu. Hivyo sasa ndio tunaambiwa wakati Mungu amekuletea affliction, wewe unaenda kutafuta usaidizi kwa nani? Kwa the devil. Saul alienda kutafuta usaidizi kwingine ambaye Mungu wa Israeli alikuwako na angesaidia yeye. Ni kweli? Angekuwako. Sasa yeye anaona hapana, endeni mlitafutie mwanamke ambaye anaweza kuwa anajua haya mambo. Unaona sasa? Sasa yeye mwanamke unakumbuka wakati alienda pale, hata ule mwanamke anatumia familiar spirit, anamletea Samuel waongee na yeye bako anaongea na yeye na Samuel pale ukisoma hiyo story hata utaiona pale lakini yote ilikuwa ni nini ni familia spirit ambaye alikuwa anafanya nazo sio Samuel wa kweli ilikuwa ni ucha ni uchawi ni mambo ya uchawi anaenda kwa uchawi asaidiwe so wakati ya Christian inafika pahali unakuta ame, ame lose kuna wengine hata siku hizi ni wa Kristo lakini wakati anaona mambo imesindikana unasikia amekimbia kwa nani kwa kuaganga asaidiwe manake Mungu ambaye anaamini amefanya nini ameenda kutembea ameenda kutembea kidogo sasa shetani wewe kuja shikiri hapa so can no shift a very natural to us and when we cannot trust God and depend upon him we presently are up to take some indirect course of our own affliction is often compared to a prison nasiki hapa a friction is often compared compared to a prison and the sorrows which accompany it to the fetters uh, and chains kwa hivyo ujue a friction ni kana kwamba is a is a freak is a prison ambaye Mungu amefanya nini amekuwe amekuweka the sorrows ambayo unapitia una pale ni kufungwa umefanya nini umefu umefungwa na Mungu ni kwa sababu wewe hawezi kulainika kama hujafanya nini hujafungwa hujafungwa hivyo unaona sasa so god that put us kama Mungu basi ndio ametuweka that prison what are we going to do iko hivi god that put us into prison can only help us out again 
Nani ametoka katika prison? Nani anaweza kutotoa? So, for he is the governor and the judge of the world. Manake yeye he is the governor and the judge of this world. He has judged you. Anajua wewe unless ya kufunga in prison sasa tuongee this world the prison. Tunaongea sasa hii affliction ambayo zinakukuta. Huko nje tu gani lakini tunaongea juu I want you there to understand. Ni hizi ile affliction ambayo unapitia hapa duniani ni za prison umewekwa na soros ni nini? Ni fetus. Umefu? Na nani amekufunga? Ni Mungu. Ni Mungu. Yeye peke yake ndiye anaweza peke yake kufanya nini? Kukuto? Sasa hapa tunaambiwa to use cano shift in attempt to break yani is an attempt to break that prison. Ukijaribu kutumia njia zako za yani za kado kado sasa ambaye ni sinifu ati ndio jitoe katika hii prison that way hiyo shift ndio tunaita cano shift and it is an attempt ya ku break in in pre wewe unataka ku break this prison kwa sababu unataka kutumia njia zako lakini hautaki kumaliza kifungo uende na ile njia Mungu anataka anataka sasa wewe unatafuta shift zako zile utafanya ndio break this prison sasa hapo ndio tunaambiwa whenever somebody break a prison what happens anawachiliwa akishikwa anafungwa miaka ngapi anaongezeka kifungo inaongezeka kifungo inaongezeka hivyo hivyo ndio iko That's why a Christian ambaye hawezi kutoa the line he will be like a bottle in the smoke in the whole of his life in this world. Wewe unapitishwa una, una hapa unaruka. Ukiruka ulikuwa prison unarudishwa. Kifungo inakuwa mara ngapi? Sasa utatoka. Sasa sinaona utaenda mpaka ukute unaenda kaburini kama hujai kuwa na any happiness in this world. You are a child of God. It is what we call a child of God walking in darkness in this world. No happiness. Because he prison yako itafanya nini? Haitai? Haitaisha. Haitaisha kwa sababu na wewe ulikataa kabisa you cannot tell the line. Hawezi simama katika ukweli vile ataikana. Kuna mambo unaenda unayuba yuba unaenda hivi unatumia jia una break the, the prison unaenda. Anakushika tena. One thing you utaenda biguni lakini wewe hapa hii dunia you will be like a bottle in the smoke utakaushwa mpaka tumeambiwa mpaka uwe kama nini kama mi kama kumi kama miti hauna yani hata the, the, the beauty ambayo ulikuwa naifanya nini itaisha itaisha so the devil will make an advantage of our friction if we can He tempted Christ when he was hungry. Hebu soma Matthew 4:3 tuone. 4:3. Mjaribu akamjia akamwambia, "Ukiwa ndiwe mwana wa Mungu, amuru kwamba mawe haya yawe mikate." Yes, you see now. And when and when the tempter came to him, he said, "If thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread you see now hapa the devil will make an advantage of our friction if we can christ anataka kushida mwili na amekataa hii chakula ya mwili kwa sababu he want to defeat this body ndio akule chakula za nini za za binguni za kiroho. Usi nao. Nao hapa Satan anajua hasa huyu akikataa kula hizi chakula hii na hii chakula ya mwili anajua eh ndio kabisa Adam wa kwanza alifanya nini? Alitamani mpaka akawa kukula hii chakula. Sasa anamwambia sasa nao kweli nimeona eh wewe kweli ni mwana wa Mungu na uko na nini? Na uko na nguvu. Badilisha hii mawe. Usi nao He want to take advantage of the afri- affliction. Affliction. Manake Yesu Kristo akona nini? Na njaa. Na njaa. So Satan will make our affliction will take an advantage with our affliction. Nataka hapa muone. Ni kwa sababu people unaweza kuwa unapitia affliction. 
Sasa nimeona kabisa huyu mtu ameumia sana na hapo ndio nakuja naye kutumia ali take advantage of that affliction. Maana hapo alitaka kuja kwa sababu alijua Christ ako na nini? Ako na njaa. Kwa hivyo Christ kama angekuwa mwana wa Mungu angefanya nini? Angekuwa enticed. Angetosha. Angetosha angebadilisha hii mawe maana yake hii mawe angeifanya iwe iwe chakula ndio afanya nini? Akule chakula ya nini? Ya mwili? Ya mwili. Lakini naye alikuwa anataka kukatana na mwili kwa sababu alikuwa anataka kule chakula ya nini? Ya kiro? Ya kiroho. Lakini sasa huyu naye anakuja kumdanganya wewe si uko na njaa. Badilisha. Because he knew this was God and as afanya nini? Anaweza badilisha. So Satan can take advantage of our affliction and that's what he do. Wakati wewe Mungu anakuletea affliction anataka ndio ubadilike na ndio ujue njia naye Satan hapo ndio anakujia to take advantage of that. Na akija hapo watu wengi wanga hawajitoi. Hapo wanga wanaangushwa na wanga wanaanguka. So though our state be low and the fountain of our supplies be dried up though our credit be smashed and blood with slander and reproach though we be cast out as useless things as a nod withered skin bottle counted and fit to hold wine yet we must not forget god's precept hiyo ndio gao yetu christ alishinda kwa sababu alisema namna gani it is written it is written because Satan will always make an advantage. Sasa wakati wewe unapitia shida, wakati unasikia kuna kitu nakwambia ina save uh, upitie njia ambaye it is sinful, ujue sasa nani anataka advantage? Shetani. Kwa hivyo utamshida na nini? Na neno la nani? Na maandiko. Hata muambie mimi hata ukiona na, na, na yani niko na njaa, Mungu wangu hawezi fanya nini? Hawezi kuniwachilia atanipatia. Kwa hivyo waacha kundanganya ati niende nihipe chakula ama nifanye hivi ndio nipate chakula. No. My God knows. Na anaelewa kwa nini zina nini? Sina. Sina chakula. He knows. Mungu anasema namna gani? Hata kana kwamba hujapiga magoti, nilikuwa najua nini? Nilikuwa najua shida yako. So sio maombi yetu ambayo uwaga inafanya Mungu atupatie. That one we should know. Yeye yeah, hata kana kwamba hujapiga magoti anasema anajua, anajua. Kwa hivyo ni kumaanisha we, wakati wote unapitia ene, inene we unapitia shida wewe satan yakija kutake advantage always kata mwambie my god anafanya nini anajua yale anafanya nini napitia anajua so anasema mnakaa kusoma isaya 517 inasema namna gani inasema 517 mm. nisikilizeni nyinyi mjuayo haki Watu ambao mioyoni mwenu mna sheria yangu msiogope matukano ya watu wala msifadhaike kwa sababu ya dihaka zao Nasikia Here can unto me he that no righteousness the people in whose heart is my law fear ye not the reproach of men neither be ye afraid of their revilings Musiogo Musiogope that is the word of God Musiogope. Musiwa ati mnafadhaika kwa sababu watu wamesema hivi ama wana, ama unapitia hii. Nyinyi ambaye mnajua nini? Mnajua ukweli. So, tukimalizia another evil ambaye waga inafanyika ni unafanya tuongezewe ni gani? Another evil is despoding and distrustful thoughts of God. Tuna distrust, we have a distrusting thoughts of God. Mafikiria Yaani una, una ni kana kwamba hauamini yale Mungu anasema. You distrust him. Wakati wa watu una, una yaani kitu inakukujia, alafu unakuwa una mafikira mengine ambaye inakukujia una distrust Mungu. Kama gani? Hebu tusome 1st Samuel 27:1. Soma. Ndipo Daudi aliposema moyoni mwake. <coughs> Siku moja basi mimi nitaangamia kwa mkono wa sahuri. Hakuna jema zaidi kwangu kuliko ukimbia mpaka nchi ya Wafilisti. Naye sahuri atakata tamaa kwa habari yangu asini tafute tena mipakani mwote mwa Israeli. Hivyo nitatoka 
katika mikono yake. You see now, this is the same David. He's a child of God. Hata kana kwamba bado anashiako na promises za Mungu na Mungu kabisa amemwaahidi na anajua Mungu hawezi kosea lakini bado ako na distrustful vote na ndio anasema i shall one day perish by the hand of Saul sio mpaka anaona kana kwamba atafanya nini ataangamia ataangamia mikononi mwa Saul kwa hivyo kwa hivyo kumaanisha hata kana kwamba yeye ni mwana wa Mungu lakini kuna kitu inakuja distrustful vote mpaka anaona kana kwamba hizi promises za Mungu hazitafanya nini hazitatimia hazitatimia those are the things that by wanga inaendelea in our heart kama wa Kristo na ni kitu sio yani ni, ni mambo mengi sana hata ukisoma the same psalm Samuel eh, 1 Samuel 22:5 inasema namna gani no wacha tusome eh, Psalms 31:22 ndio tutasaidia kidogo tusikie vile tena David alisema 31:22 inasema mm. nami nalisema kwa haraka yangu Nimekataliwa mbali na macho yako lakini ulisikia sauti ya dua yangu wakati niliko kulilia. Nasikia for I said in my haste I am cut off from before thy night. Nasikia sasa Daudi za rafiki anasema nilisema kwa kwa haraka. Anaona makosa yenye alikuwa amefanya. Anasema nitakufia katika mikono ya nani? Lakini sasa yeye atena anaona hapana hapo nilikose eh nilisema nilis, nilisema kwa haraka kwa haraka Nil, nilikuwa yani ni mafikira mengine alimkujia mpaka akaongea mambo ambaye si ya kweli so for i said in my high yani in my haste i am cut off from before thine eyes never the rest akakukuja kujua never the rest thou hardest the voice of my supplication when i cried unto thee hata kana kwamba nilisema hivyo lakini wakati nilikulilia ulifanya nini ulinisikia. Kwa hivyo hiyo yote uanga ni mambo wa Kristo uanga tunapitia na all these things they prolong our afflictions because of our distrustful votes of our God. Sasa sawa? So Mungu eh atusaidie tuweze kujua. So questioning our interest in God merely because of the cross. Kuna kati tunafika tuna question our interest in god merely because of the cross sasawa if god be with us why is all this befallen us kuna wakati mkristo anakuja anafika anasema kama kweli mungu wako nami na sisi kwa nini haya yote nafanya nini naapitia those are questioning god we question our interest in god na tena hiyo uanga tena inatuletea afflictions na ni mbaya sana kwa sababu umesahau tena wakati unaanza kusema kama mimi ni mwana wa Mungu kwa nini tena napitia haya na tena na, na, kwa hivyo nikusema you are starting question tena the same god ambaye amesema atakupitishia atakurudi ni kwa sababu wewe ni nani ni mwana wake ni mwana wake tena unaanza kulalami kulalamika all these things lazima tuzielewe eh, ni kwa sababu ni lazima tuyajue deposa tuwe tujiondoe katika afflictions na deposa tukimalizia tukisoma Psalms ya mwisho ambaye inasema eh Psalm 73:13 uone vile mtu wanga anakuwa na kitu naita despairing thoughts ana despair we have a despairing thoughts ambaye wanga sina arise katika ndani ya binadamu inasema namna gani hebu soma Sasa tarehe tatu ya sema. Hakika nimejisavisa moyo wangu bure. Nime nawa mikono yangu kwa kutokukosa. You see now that was also the assumed. Anasema nimesafisha mikono yangu bu. That is still kuna ni mararamiko. Manake yeye anasimama katika ukweli lakini kwa sababu haoni msaidizi wa Mungu mpaka anaona kana kwamba yeye amejisafisha bu, bure. Kwa hivyo hiyo bado ni manduguniko na hiyo uanga inaongezea e, shida katika maisha yetu. Kwa hivyo lazima tuelewe na tuwe wa Kristo ambaye 
wanasimama katika ukweli tujue yale tunapitia katika hii dunia no matter how hard they are eh, let us adhere to our god manake anajua anatuelewa anajua pahali tumetoka pahali tunaenda yale tutapitia katika huu limwengu hakuna kitu hata moja ambaye uanga haiko katika machoni mwa Mungu no matter what so we always give thanks tunaambia give thanks oh always Manaka, if you do anything else kama yale tumeona you are adding afflictions unto your life unto your life sasawa amen